Boom. Boop. Boop. No. Why do I want to quit? Oh, I'm such a goofball. Wait. I did not do this. There you go. No, I did not want to quit the game. There's only one. Resuming game. Wait, stop! Don't tell us stuff we didn't ask you about. Zero's probably watching us right now. What are you gonna do if he's listening in? Oh, would that be bad? Hell yeah, it would! We don't know how much that bastard knows about us. Maybe he just picked a bunch of random people to kidnap. If that is the case, then it'd be dangerous for us to let him know too much. If Zero knows who we are, he could go after our families. Maybe he'd tell us he had them to get us to do stuff, you know? He seems very perspe perspective. But we still need to know what our names Perceptive. are. Perceptive. It's going to be hard to talk to each other if we don't have names. All right, then why don't we have code names? Code names? Yeah, we'll each pick something. Like, I'll be seven. Seven? Why are you seven? Because this bracelet number says seven. <laughs> Very simple. I like that. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. I'm going to be Santa. Santa! Are the chumps no Japanese? No? Well, son means three. So, I'll be Santa. You know, like Santa Claus. Fits, don't you think? Fits very well today. <laughs> then your bracelet number. Yeah, it's got a three on it. Good job, Grandpa. Whoa. Very well then. I'll go next, shall I? My bracelet number is one. Given that, I think Ace seems appropriate. I'll be Lotus then. As I'm sure you all know, it has eight petals. Which means, of course, that my bracelet number is... Eight. Who would have guessed? I would appreciate it if you would call me Snake. Snake! <laughs> Snake eyes. My bracelet number is two. Since Ace has chosen cards, then I choose dice. Snake eyes, clearly. Which is particularly relevant given that I am blind. Oh. You can't see? I knew it. Me next! I want to be Clover. You know, like a four-leaf clover. Good luck, right? She's very hippity. All right, my number's five. So my code name is gonna be... Well, I have one. It's not like there's any point to it now. I mean, we all know your name already. You're Junpei. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh. Then you should all call me by my name, too. Because, I mean, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem fair to Jumpy. You're thinking it's not cool for you to hide your name after you told us his. Uh, What's your bracelet number? It's six. All right, then. Uh, why don't we call you June? June? Yeah, you know, it's the it's the sixth month of the year. So you're June. Yeah, so you're June. Got that? <laughs> Jumpy? Are you good with that? Uh, yeah. Okay, then. I like how common collects So this is how everyone breaks down. One is Ace. Two is Snake. Three is Santa. Four is Clover. Five is me. Six is June. Seven is seven. <laughs> and eight is Lotus. Isn't there one more? That means eight of us have revealed our bracelet numbers. 
the only one left is... That glasses guy with hair like a bird's nest. <laughs> You haven't said a thing so far, have you? <laughs> what number are you? Mm. Hey, I'm talking to you. I mean, isn't it obvious? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> Just saying. There are nine people here. And you know who numbers one through eight are. I'm the only one left. So you're nine? Yeah. What's your code name? Uh, code name? What do you want us to call you? We all made up names. You should too. I don't need one. Why not? Because I am not going to stay here with you. You've got some sort of plan? I do. Yeah? What's that? You sure you want to know? Nah. Yeah. All right. Let me show you. Hold up. I'm gonna do this. Do what? What is he gonna do? <laughs> hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, you look mad. Stay back. Ah, if you get any closer, she gonna get it. I'll cut her open. Uh, yeah, that's right. Clover, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What the hell are you trying to do? I told you, this is my plan. What are you gonna do to her, you sick son of a bitch? Don't worry. I'm not gonna do anything to her. If she just does what I tell her to, I'll let her go. <laughs> Slowly. That's right. Just follow me. Here. Verify. <gasps> the left. Look on your left. Do you see the device on the wall? Place your hand on the scanner panel, the round part. What if I don't? Hello, Pars. Merry Christmas to you, brother. Just being a little bit immersed in this storyline. So right now, there's this man who has a knife on the girl. And I think they're trying to go through a door. I'm okay. ADP. Are you an idiot? What do you think? I could slit your throat right now. Merry Christmas. <laughs> he has a knife. It's like glaring right there. I'll kill you if I have to. All I need is your bracelet. Yeah, but this game is like half story, half puzzles. So I love both of them. <laughs> Just do it. Do it now. Sponsored by Nike. Okay, I'll do it. Like this? So that's how it works. He called that round part of the device the scanner panel. If we put our left hand on it, our bracelet number gets entered into the device. But how does he know? Then... Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets, and find that the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Door 5. But why does this guy know so much about how this thing works? It's like he knows exactly what to do. Kinda Good. weird. Good. You're done. Next. You, right? You're the one with the number one bracelet, right? Yes. I am. So? Then you're next. Just verify your number like this little brat did. <laughs> what are you doing? Do it! Don't you care what happens to her? Does he? Okay, okay. Just calm down. I'm coming over. Now, verify. 
All right, this is what you wanted, right? I'm a lawyer. Okay, there's two numbers. Now the device has both Clover and Ace's numbers. So that's four, four and one. one. That's a five. Well, this one is five. It's the same as the number written on the door. But it won't open yet. Only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. One more person. If what Zero said is true, he needs one more person. Who? Who does he need? I wonder. Get back! No! Farther! More than that! Go all the way back! Okay. <laughs> Wait. Uh, don't tell me. Clover's four, and Ace is one. Added to the ninth man's nine. Four plus one plus nine is fourteen, and the digital root of fourteen, one plus four, is five. Whoa! In other words... Digital root. <laughs> He's crazy. Thank God you were all so cooperative. Now I can get out of this nightmare. He added his own. Good. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> Wait. Mm. Here. She's all yours. <laughs> Okay, have a good one, guys. Have a good one. I'm going off ahead now. Well then, goodbye. And sayonara. Clover, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Damn it! That bastard! I guess they're trying to open the door. Uh, open, damn it! <laughs> Shit! It won't budge. Do you hear something? Nope. Like, what? Like, some sort of beeping. Uh oh. You're right. I can hear it too. It sounds like it's behind the door. What is it? Why is the chopping? God damn it! You... you lied! Lied? <laughs> this wasn't supposed to happen! This is wrong! This is wrong! What is happening in there? Open the door, please! I'm begging you! Help me! Please get me out of here! Get me out of here! Oh. Mm. Ugh, God damn it! Engage. Why? Why won't it work? Engaged? Is it because it's occupied? Oh my god, oh my god! There's no time left! Listen! I was lied to! He lied to me! He put me in here! Who's he? It was him! He killed me! It was him! Who's he? <laughs> oh gee. What was that? <sighs> a beep? Vacant. Did that thing just make that sound? Um, the display changed from engaged to vacant. Let's see if we can open it. Okay. Well, it registered my bracelet number, but it won't open with one person. We need at least two more people. 
So I got a five, and I need to open the five door. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Snake and seven, six and eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine. Eight, nine. Oh, actually, it doesn't really matter who. I think I'll go with. Hmm. Which pair would be good? I mean, this group only one can see. Where's Clover? Oh, she's not with me. I'll choose this group. I think. Snake, Seven. You think you could give me a hand here? Hmm? <sighs> Five plus two plus seven equals fourteen. The digital root of fourteen, one plus four, equals five. This should do it. Now we just need to pull the lever on the side. Pull the lever, Kronk. You guys ready? I'm gonna open it. Oh, there's blood on the door. Oh my god. Good god. Whoa, that's pretty bad. He he blew up. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, June, uh, are you okay? <laughs> She's what having a hell? fever. I, where'd this fever come from? Uh, All right, okay. Uh, let's just rest for a minute, okay? Uh, you think you can walk? Here we go. How are you feeling? Are, are you all right? Why? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Do any of you know what the fuck is going on here? Oof. Who's Zero? What's this nonary game? Come on! Anybody? Anything? What the hell is going on? What are we doing here? <laughs> Skunk. It's ten o'clock then. That means it's been an hour since Zero's little announcement. Fuck! I've had enough of this crap! How long are we gonna pussyfoot around like this? We've only got eight hours until this time limit Zero was going on about is up! Let's get going already! Go! Go! No. I refuse. I'm not gonna end up like him. Him? You mean the ninth man? Of course. Who else? Blood. Oh, blood and pieces of flesh. That's no way for a person to die. <clears throat> I think he just screwed up. He probably set off some sort of trap, and that killed him. I'm not gonna screw up like that. I'm getting out of here alive! <laughs> <laughs> What's so goddamn funny? Oh, my apologies. You were just, uh, so very confident. I couldn't help myself. What the fuck? I think you've mistaken the situation. Huh? The ninth man's death. It had nothing to do with the trap. Or at least, not the sort of trap you imagine it did. Then? He broke one of Zero's rules. That was why he died. Quite simple if you think about it. Huh? You still don't... Ugh. All right. How about you take a moment and think back to what Zero said? Specifically, what did he say about the number of people? He said only three to five people can pass through one numbered door. Right? And after that? You've forgotten the relevant part. What did Zero say? Uh, Zero said. 
that only two people can go through, that everyone who verified had to go through, had to go, more than six people can go through. I'm pretty sure it's a second one. All those who enter must leave, and all who enter must contribute, right? I think it was something like that. Whatever it was, it, it means that groups of less than three or more than five can't go through. That is correct. A gold star for you, Junpei. Yay! The ninth man, however, broke that rule. He tried to pass through a numbered door by himself. That was why he was executed. And Zero's watching us from somewhere. Making sure we don't break any rules. Oh, I'm not so sure of that. Why not? Because this execution system is entirely automatic. You didn't notice? There's no need for him to monitor us. What do you mean? Very well. I see it must be me who tells you. I've waited long enough, I suppose. I had hoped Zero might spare me the trouble, but... That seems increasingly unlikely. Do you know something? Well, I know a great many things, but yes. What is it you know? Here. A card? What does it say? See for yourself. Come on now, what's the point of giving me this? Give me that. Huh? The hell is this? <laughs> I see. I think it's something only he can read. Yeah, it's a... This is Braille. Braille. Sorry, guys. I, I can't read this. Here, have it back. Okay, that was done. What's so important about that card? I found it in my pocket. I can only assume it is a message from Zero. From Zero? A message? Wh what does it say? Calm down now. No need to panic. You don't need to force me. I'll read it. <clears throat> Bracelet number two. Since you are not blessed with sight, I shall bless you, and only you, with information. I shall tell you of the function of the red, of the dead, and of the bracelet. The red is the recognition device. It will verify your number. Beside every number door, you will find a red. The dead is the deactivation device. It does exactly what it says. Once you have passed through the number door, you must use the dead to stop the detonator in your bracelet. But perhaps you are wondering, what does this detonator detonate? I am afraid this might be something of a surprise. You don't say... I have placed a small bomb inside of you and the people who you are about to meet. You swallowed it while you were unconscious. I have no doubt, by the time you read this note, the bar will have passed your stomach and found it way to your small intestine. In other words, you would be unable to regurgitate it. I suggest you do not try. As I mentioned before, the bracelet on your left hand contains a detonator. Think of it as a remote fuse, or timer, for the bar in your body. There is only one condition to call it detonate. That condition is that you enter a numbered door. Once you have done so, the timer will activate, no matter who you may be. You will have 81 seconds. That's a specific number, because that's 9 square and 8 plus 1 is 9. If after my time, the detonator has not been deactivated, it will send a signal to the bomb in your body, instructing it to explode. In order to deactivate the detonator, every person who verified their number at their birth must also verify their numbers at the dead. Once all numbers have been verified by the dead, you need only pull the lever at its side. And the countdown will cease. Anyone who does not verify their number at the red will find themselves unable to verify their number at the dead. That is to say, 
So as long as the door is open, the dead will not function. So if we were to break the door... Hmm. Lastly, let us ask how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, for the heartbeat, which is zero. Doesn't mean I'm dead, right? In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, or the bags are the world's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. There is no other way to remove your bracelet. If you attempt to force it off, or disable it at near, the bomb within you will immediately explode. This is all the information which I can impart to you. How you choose to use it is for you to decide. If used wisely, you can eliminate those who might be a danger to you. For a time, you would be able to control your fate. I wish you the best of luck. So it's saying... Only those who verify their numbers at the red can pass through the numbered doors. Teams can't add or subtract people after they're scanned in. The reds, deads, and bracelets enforce the rules. They're judge, jury, and executioner. Is he gonna puke? Shit! A fucking bomb! C come out! Come out, damn it! Only way is to cut your stomach. I mean, cut your intestine. There's a bomb inside me. Oh. What made Zero think creating this horror show of a game was a good idea? Alright. I'm gonna ask one more time. Do any of you know anything about Zero? Nope. Actually, I... I saw him. I saw Zero when I got grabbed. I didn't see his face, though. Son of a bitch was wearing some kind of gas mask. What the hell? Come on, guys, give me something. You know, like, surprise or something? I think we saw the same thing. I saw that, too. I did as well. Me too. I didn't see inside the mask, though. That mask, it was really scary. Huh? Oh, so all of our abductions were the same. We were taken from home at midnight. The person claiming to be Zero had a mask on. There was white smoke, and then each of us passed out. Who says it was midnight? We woke up to find ourselves on D-Deck, in a room with a three-level bunk bed. How about you, Seven? Did the same happen to you? Oh, me? Yeah, well, mine was just like the rest of yours. That doesn't sound convincing. Okay, uh, that's good enough for now. So, I have a question. Snake and Clover, you were both kidnapped from the same room, and you woke up together. So, what's the deal with the two of you anyway? We're siblings. Siblings? Uh, yes. Got a problem with that? Snake is my older brother, obviously. That means I'm his little sister. That really so hard to understand? No, is this Junpei's fault? She is correct, of course. Are you, uh, surprised? Well, yeah, but... Why? There are other people here with connections to one another. Those two, for instance. Oh, you mean between Jumpy and me? Ah, uh, yes. You did say you were childhood friends, didn't you? Wait, you went to school together? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, 
You think maybe we could figure out who Zero is this way? Yeah, you're right. You connect the dots between the victims and that leads you to the perp. Textbook stuff. He sounds like a cop. Junpei, Jun, does any of this ring a bell? Huh, ring a bell. Ring school a bell? bell? School bell. Perhaps you went to school with the son of a multi-millionaire. <laughs> a millionaire? That sounds like from a TV drama or novel. Son? Well, someone bought this boat and set up all of this. Whoever Zero is, they must be incredibly rich. Well, we can't be sure of that. To me, this seems as though it's the work of an organization, not an individual. Most likely, Zero is simply the representative of a larger group. What sort of organization? It could be a number of things. An army, perhaps, or a research group. Perhaps this is all some sort of psychological experiment. If it is, then it's a pretty fucked up experiment. I mean, come on! A guy's dead! I don't know who the hell this Zero asshole is, but I know for sure he's got to be pretty fucked up in the head to do all this. If this was all one guy, then he's got some serious issues. I thought we were finished with that topic. But then what should we do? We should talk it through oh my god enough all we're doing is talking talking won't solve anything it can't help us find our way out of here you really sure you want to just sit around we've only got seven and a half hours left and we already wasted an hour and a half of our nine hours you're right very well then there's only one way for us to proceed it's the doors Sure not gonna be fun running around knowing we gotta jump when Zero says jump. Well, it's stupid to just sit around here doing nothing. Well, thanks to Snake's card, at least we have some idea of how this all works. Correct. And so long as we all follow the rules, we should, uh, we will most likely be all right. But... But what? Who's going to go in which door? Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. We can't have any more than five people in one door. All eight of us can't go in the same door. Then it would seem we will have to split up. Wait. I'm telling you now, there is no way in hell that I'm going into door five. Come on now, that's don't fair. be selfish. Call me whatever the hell you want. I'm not going in there. If I'm going to have to walk through all that blood, then I'd rather stay here. <sighs> and we were doing so well. Sorry, but I ain't going in there either. Someone else can go into door five. Oh, Santa, not you too. Hey, man, I just bought these shoes. <laughs> Gotta keep them clean and nice. If you think I'm getting some creepy dude's blood all over him, you got another thing coming. What the hell, man? She's before friends. She's before friends, everyone. Weren't you the one who kept saying we should get going? Yeah. So, doesn't mean I wanted to go into door five. Oh, God. Fine, I'll go into door five. I can't go in there alone, though. Anyone else willing to come with me? I'll go. What? Don't worry. You'll be fine. We may part now, but I'm certain we'll meet again later. How do you know that? Because I do. That's not an answer! If you're going, I'm going too. I'm... What am I going to do with you? There's nothing you have to do. If I join you, the problem is solved, correct? Seven is seven, and Snake is two. And if you add Clover's four in my one, the digital root will be five. Seven plus two plus four plus one is 14. The digital root of 14, one plus... Yeah, we know. Oh, it works perfectly. The four of us can go into door five. Wait, what about the other four? What's their digital route gonna be? Lotus, Santa, June, and me. Eight, three, six, and five. Our bracelet numbers are eight, three, six, and five. Um, that would be 17, 
22, 4. 8, 3, 6, 5. What would our digital root be? That'll be 4. 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 5 <laughs> is 22. So the digital root of 22. It's 4. Add up our four bracelet numbers and the digital root is 4. Seems a bit too convenient. Then we can go into door 4. Yeah. Huh. That worked out well. So the team assignments will be like this. But hmm. seven snake, clover, and ace. They would go through door five. Lotus, Santa, June, and me will go through door four. What to choose? What to choose? Are these really the teams I want? Beyond door five is what remains of the ninth man. What to choose? I never want to see that thing again, but something's telling me that it'd be a good idea to examine the corpse, even just a little closer. Of course, if I went through door 5, I wouldn't be going with Lotus and Santa. I could bring June with me through door 5, but that means she'd have to see the body in there. I don't want to put her through that. Or do I? Should I stay silent and go through door four? Or should I stop them and insist on door five? I feel like I want to see the body. All right, then. It seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? Wait. I'm going through door five. We're over there too, right, Snake? The door's not going anywhere. Slow down. I... Which door? Which one? Which door? I don't know which door. I want to see the body, but I don't want June to see it. I guess door four would be fine. This is fine, right? This is fine. I'll go through door four with Lotus, Santa, and June. Yeah. There's nothing to worry about. I just need to stay by her side. This should be fine. <laughs> it's no problem this way. I should see the other four off. Looks like Ace and the others are going. <sighs> Bye, Felicia. Now then, goodbye. Be careful. Look at that blood, though. <sighs> so horrible. He can't see, so it's fine for him. What are you doing? We need to hurry. Snake, your shoes. It's fine. Hurry! Or are you planning on dying with everyone else? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Sorry, Snake! Let's go! Hey! How is it over there? Did you find anything? Please say something, will you? Something's beeping. It's just like before. Probably the sound of the detonator on the bracelet. Do you think they're okay? Uh. <laughs> uh. Hey, there it is. That's got to be that dead thing. Come on, get over here. We got to authenticate. The beeping stopped. Phew. Looks like it stopped. Hey, guys, are you doing all right over there? Yep, we're fine. Oh, hey, 
I'm going to tell you about this whole dead thing, okay? The dead is just like the red, but the color is different. You know how the red was red? Well, the dead is blue. Other than that, it's just like the red. Authenticating is the same, too. <laughs> awesome! Thanks! That helps a lot. Well, we should probably move on now. You be careful out there. Roger that. Whew. Now it's our turn. I'll go first. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Sure. Let's go. All right, let's go. She just said. Run! Oh, damn. It's counting down. We can't go back! We need to hurry and find the device! Hey! Where the hell is the dead? How would I know? <laughs> Don't give me that crap! Start looking! I already am! Oof. Get told off, bro. Don't tell me the dead is in one of those rooms. Oh no! How many rooms do you think there are? Ah, fuck! We don't have time to count. We just need to open them all. It, it won't open. Shit, this one's no good. Same here. It's not moving! Oh. There it is! At the end of the hallway. Run! Hey, how many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Our time limit is 81 seconds! I know that, goddammit! I'm asking you how many seconds we have left! I don't think we need to know. Hurry! Because by the time... Dead. It's times Get that we're dead. Here. Come on, everyone! Flip the switch! There you go. Looks like it stopped. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <sighs> There's another door at the end of the hallway. Let's try this one first. <laughs> and of course it won't open. That's Akiba. Mars. What's this mark? It, mail? No, not exactly. That's probably the symbol of Mars. Well, technically, they are the same symbol. But I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. The symbols of the solar system. Oh, th that's right. The sun. Saturn. And Earth. At least that's what I'm assuming. So this isn't the man symbol. It's a symbol for Mars? Yep, yep. I think so, yes. I see. Wait, where's Santa? Santa is buying us gifts. Yeah, so, I looked the place over. Here's the deal. None of the other doors open. Then that must mean... We only have two more doors. B92, Maybe it's the room B92. number. The door on the left has a B92, and the one on the right says B93. All right, let's open them. I'll open B92. Okay, I'll get B93 then. One, two, three! Hey, it opened. Yeah, it did. I, uh, I didn't expect that. It was so easy. Maybe this is all part of Zero's plan. Can't say I enjoy being treated like someone's puppet. Well, now we have these two rooms. I'm sure there's something in there that will help us get out of here. 
Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. You two take the other one. All right. Okay. Seek a way out. Because this is a... Uh, okay. That face looks expensive. I wonder how much we could get for it. Are you gonna steal it? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> this is kind of a weird looking picture. Do you think it's an abstract painting or something? It looks kind of like... A demon with an elephant-like nose. Sucking on the human's brain. <laughs> Being brain. What? Where the heck did that come from? That's her brain made up. <laughs> What's her brain made up? <laughs> Can't say I'd mind finding out a little more about what's going on in there. Does it look like what she said it would? It's an alien. I don't know. There's something here. Ah. Jumpy, what are you doing? We don't have time to be relaxing on the sofa. Matches. Box of matches. There are matches inside, obviously. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes. I'm fine. Let me see your forehead. <laughs> Guess it really has gone down. Are you <laughs> worried about me? Oof. What should I say? Yeah, I guess I am. Hey, come on. It's not like that. Hmm. Should I be cool or should I just be honest? I can, I can, I can, get, I can be honest, right? Sure, I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I guess I am. Hey, <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh. By the way, Jumpy. I guess it didn't matter, darn. Hmm. How did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D deck. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No, why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Damn straight. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Well, you asked me the same thing. That's not fair, girl. She's not well, fair. I don't know anything. I mean, you're hiding it. How would I know? <laughs> you mean like the number of men I've dated? What? 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 What is this? What has this turned into? <laughs> hiding a bed. <sighs> oh, gee. Thank you, Senpai, bro. Uh, if she's hiding how many men she dated, though. <laughs> Do you want to know? I don't think I want to know. Thank you very much. Don't worry. Only 18. 18? Dang. She has a lot. Time zero. Time zero? Okay. <sighs> Wait, yeah. why am I relieved? I guess I just haven't met Mr. Wright yet. Oh, but why am I relieved? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything. Hopefully you're not. Just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on D-Deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. Hmm, I wonder. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. 
Do you remember Seven saying something like that? He said exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, I do. So? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might be? It could be you, June. I'm just saying. No, nothing. Oh. Well, if it had something to do with school, then it could be one of our teachers, or maybe the principal. No, oh, they're that malicious. Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. Oh, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. Hmm. It's a display case, but there's nothing being displayed. How sad. Looks like the drawers are empty too. Thank you for the input. It's a round wooden table. Oh. What's this? Oh, it's a it's a room, okay. What's in here? It's a bottle with water in it. This is a bedroom. They probably have it here because your throat always feels dry when you wake up, you know? My throat's dry, but I think that's because I'm a little a little nervous right now. Why am I nervous? Well, we did run a lot, so we're kind of sweaty. Hey, Jumpy, did you want to take a shower together? Whoa! <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, jeez. Too late to take it back. My brain's already working up. The picture. I don't know what is he trying to say. My throat was dry already. This sure isn't helping. A wooden cupboard. There are cups inside. Surprisingly, no one. Oh, surprising no one. Oh, surprising no one. <laughs> it's a light blue blanket with some design on it. Someone's made the bed, or at least never unmade it. There's only bed sheet under the blanket. Not that excited. Two pillows next to each other. Guess it's a double. Huh? What's up? You're turning red. Oh man, is her fever back? Hey, are you alright? Do you need to lay down for a minute? I, I'm fine. I think it, it's it's still a little early for that. What? What's a little? What's early? Girl, what is she saying? Hey, seriously, are you really okay? I don't think she's okay. A bed frame. Now that we don't have to worry about falling off, I toss and turn when I sleep. She's blushing again. What the heck is she thinking about? What is she thinking about? This is in the painting. It is a map. Ooh, that is a great find. I think it'll be really useful. Let's take it with us. Ooh, map. Map screen. The map screen can only be viewed during the story section. Okay, clicking on the green pad the floor allows you to see a bird's eye view of the room. <sighs> this ship is bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about 900 feet long. Must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Huh. Even if it's just some sort of style choice, there's just too much. Do you remember what Zero said? Do you think maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Hmm. Do you think this boat is... A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah, you know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? I mean, a number of people would do it. Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. Yep. No way. Do you even know how much money that would take? No idea. But all they've got to do is break even, you know? Break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship. Climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world in the resurrected Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have more customers than they'd know what to do with. 
Do you really think people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? It's the site of the worst accident in history. <sighs> Over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd get cursed just for going. A curse, huh? Jumpy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? <laughs> no, they're a load of crap. I don't want to say that. I do. Yeah, well, um, I, I guess so. I, to a certain extent. Uh, what about you? No, I, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Hmm. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amun-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. Uh, haven't you ever heard that one? So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right! That mummy, the priestess, supposedly, she was special. What do you mean? Well, supposedly, she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes. But she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She almost looked alive. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, it's that thing. I uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, where your body turns into some kind of wax? Yeah? Amber? The fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And... Yes, saponification. But that's not what it was. Huh? That's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. Let it go. Let it go. What? They're frozen? That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. You know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all of that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic. But wouldn't freezing destroy cells or something? That's what I learned, like the ice crystals would penetrate the cell membrane and killing the cell. Even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. That's crazy. <laughs> I think so too, but maybe it's true and we just didn't know about it before. I didn't know? Yep. Maybe it's common sense to eat shaved ice in the desert because it lasts forever. Huh? Th nah, that seems too silly to be true. <laughs> But maybe it isn't. It just appears that way because you didn't know it was true. W well, yeah. Hmm. She has Ice lots that of insight. Melt, even in the desert? Does something like that really exist? No, even if it did, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? Hmm. Who knows? Who knows? We got lots of mysteries. So I'm in the room. Jower? Oh, a key. A dresser key. This is the mirror for the dresser. And now she's playing with her hair. Does she even realize she's doing that? Hey, we don't have time for that. Come on, it's not like there's anyone here you need to impress. Yes, there is. Who? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> this guy is so dense. What? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? Ah, forget it, Jumpy. Dude, this, this guy is pretty dense. A chair. There's nothing particularly interesting about it. It's a light. Thanks to it, we can see. I don't think there's anywhere. Oh, there's a door here. 
And that's a bathroom wall. There are square tiles all over it. <coughs> it's for putting soap. That's a shower knob. Let's see if anything happens when you turn it. No water is coming out. It's just a shower head. There's nothing special about it. Um, a collection of full and partially depleted rolls of toilet paper. Someone was well prepared. There's nothing too suspicious about it. Now let's check the toilet. There's nothing there. The tank's empty too. There isn't even any water in it. Shower curtains, huh? Let's try closing it. Now I can see the full expense. Oh, thank you, Goose, for the 100 bits. Good morning and Merry Christmas to you, brother. Full expense of the shower curtain. All its web waterproof glory. There's nothing suspicious. It's just a normal old shower curtain. A narrow shower. And I'm standing in it with June. Nothing sus about this. This is awkward. Time to open the curtain. Oh man. Wait, I want to close it. No, there should be something. Hmm, I don't trust... I don't trust that. How are you, Goose? Oh uh, yeah, why don't we go back to the living room? Okay, let's go back. Yeah, there's nothing else. Jumpy, where are you going? Uh, I was thinking of going over to Lotus's room. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm just gonna go check up on them. Cash some Z's, my dude. Is there something wrong with that? Well, no. Come back soon. Sure thing. I'll leave the rest to you. Sure. Leave it to me. Alright, off to the other room. Okay, I'm in the other room. And if I see the map, it's almost identical. This one's missing pieces. Looks like a valuable bit base, empty though. There seems to be a room to the left side of the base. Have a great stream, thank you Goose. This is the this is the bathroom wall. The whole wall is covered in the square tiles. Whoa, look! Junpei! There's a mushroom growing out of the wall! Uh, that's a shower head. That's the shower knob. I try turning it, but no water comes out. This thing on the shelf is putting soap. Is there anything in the toilet? Guess not. The tank's empty too. Some toilet paper. We've got two rolls, I guess. Oh. Hey, check this out. This is pretty nice sofa. I know, it's a shame I can't take it back with me. Oh, there's display here. Well, there's a display case. Check it out. These plates and stuff look really expensive. You want to take a look? Yes, I do. Oh, they have something. Damn. I guess this is the wrong key. Well, that means there's got to be another one somewhere around here. Otherwise, we aren't going to be able to open this thing. A candle? This might come in handy. Gotcha. Whoa, a lit candle. <coughs> Maybe we can take a look around there. But it gets so hot when I hold it. I want to put it down. Well, why don't you set it on top of the dresser? It's a flat there. At least it won't fall over. Oh yeah, good idea. Such a... Hey, it's got... It got pretty bright. 
Now we can look around a little. I think this is for the key. This is the mirror for the dresser. Dang straight. Nothing weird about it though. I can only see this. Yes, it worked. What's inside? A piece. <laughs> it's beauty melts my heart, but this isn't the time to be enjoying the soft glow of the candle, I suppose. Why is it so dark? The Titanic. Curtains. Got it. Nope. Two pillows in the pile. Oh. A pile of pillows. Is that supposed to be some kind of joke? Hey, calm down. <laughs> oh. I wanted to see that. Oh, I did. There's a cancer covered. It's all bumpy. Is that a key? It looks like a key. Oh man, I can't see. Sad. It does. Whoa. Pull it open. Pull it open. Get this one. Hey, Junpei. You got a minute? Hmm? Here, take this. A bookmark? What is this for? Uh, do you want me to read a book? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured we might as well hang on to it anyway. Then why don't you hold on to it? <laughs> you know what I hate most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate these things? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Uh, not really, but... What does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. It's like a flower language. Well, I guess it's not a flower, is it? So, leaf language, I guess? Leaf language. Yeah, you could call them leaf words. Yeah. Leaf words. Hope. Faith, love, and luck. The meaning of the leaves on a four-leaf clover. So, yeah. I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing, alright? Here. I feel like he's just gonna shove it to me, so I'll just take it. Alright, sure. <laughs> I'll take it. Ugh. <sighs> Man, I feel a lot better now. That thing was a real pain, you know? <laughs> you really hate those four words that much? Apparently. Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know? Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. Well, that's not my only reason. What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. What, worried about the four horsemen? Nah, come on, man. That's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages, that kind of crap scared people. But this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy. I'm a little insulted. Then why do you hate four so much? Because it's a half-assed number. Not the best or the worst. That's why. You, what? Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass middle number. What are you? Makes sense, makes sense. You play? 
play. You mean like gambling? Uh, yeah, of course. What else would I need? Um, yeah. In Baccarat, the best possible hand totals nine. They call it Le Grand. But the lowest, most worthless cards, zeros. They call monkey. Just like the guy in charge of this game, huh? <laughs> Zero's a monkey. What? <laughs> oh man, you're totally right. The guy who trapped us in here sure is one hell of a monkey. You know, if you think about it, the Nonary game is really a lot like Baccarat. And of course it doesn't use any of that stupid digital root junk. You just drop the tens digit and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Oh, yeah, I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. The person who makes nine wins? Wait, did you forget already? Don't you remember what Zero said? It is hidden, hidden but an exit, exit can be found. Seek, seek a way, a way out. out. So... If we want to get off this boat, we have to make a team whose numbers have the digital root of nine. And only the people in that team are going to make it out alive. Of course. That's why it's called the Nonary Game. What? Huh? You don't know? Nonary means something derived from nine or base nine. It's derived from the Latin prefix nona, which means nine. While we're at it, the prefix for one is uni. You know, like the unicorn, the horse with one horn. Two is bi, like binary. Binary means composed of two parts. Three is tri. I'm sure you've heard that one plenty. Like trio, triple, and triangle. You get the idea. After that, you have quart, quinty, sext, septum, and so on. And of course, the prefix for eight is octo, like octopus. It's called that because it has eight legs. Get it? I see. So then Nona means nine. So how many of us are trapped on this ship? That'd be nine. And what are the bracelet numbers we have? They go from one to nine. And our time limit? How many hours did we have? Zero said nine hours. And finally, to get out of this ship... We need to find the door with a nine that's hidden somewhere in the ship. By making a team with the digital root of nine. And there you have it. The number nine is everywhere in this game. He's got a real theme of nines for this whole thing. No wonder it's called the Nonary Game. She's smart. I like her. Although she needs to wear like a coat or something. It might be too drafty inside. You think maybe you're supposed to put in one of those empty spaces? I mean, the pattern does look kind of the same, doesn't it? He is right. I think so too. But if that is the case, you're going to collect all three of the tiles. Don't you think we should collect them all before you start putting them in? True. Let's put the curtain on the hook. Uh, what's that? Where's the hole? <laughs> People. <laughs> well, with this whole you gotta wonder if maybe they wanted to be caught. So you're saying maybe the one getting spied on was into that thing? Maybe they were into it, like those home invasion fantasies. Ooh. Home invasion? Interesting. I see. You two are real idiots, you know that? <laughs> well, why is there a hole? Okay, so it's a straight line. Fifth from the top and third from the right. Okay, fifth from the top, third from the right. So it's this one.
Nope. Oh, maybe it's in the other side. What's up? You're going back already? Well, I can't just leave you in here by yourself. <laughs> what? Do you think you're her knight or protector or something? You're creeping me out, dude. Whatever, man. I'm going. This one. <coughs> nice. What's this? What do you mean, what's this? Pretty obvious, isn't it? Is it a key? It's a hole in the wall. Like a hidden safe or something, you know? Anyway, let's take a look. I think there's something inside. That looks like a key. The Mars key. We can get out of here now. What's the deal with this picture, anyway? I... I think I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. What's this interesting theory? Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it is giving me a headache. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shape of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. Uh, what part of that isn't difficult, exactly? All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it's close enough for a simple approximation. <laughs> are you serious? Telepathy? Who do you think we are? Kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understood it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it said. It was probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier from some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Um... <sighs> I saw a picture like that one in his book. Hey, what do you think this picture looks like? It looks like an alien that resembles an elephant that is sucking on the brain of a human being. What do you mean? Isn't it just like abstract or something like that? It's just black and white scribbles. There's no meaning there. That's it. What about you, Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm, I, I guess it looks like... Uh, 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 Funyarimpa. 
Woo, a Funyan Moon Pa! <laughs> See, I, I mean, this totally looks like one. And here, and here. <laughs> What the hell is a Funya Rimpa? <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what do you mean? What the hell is a Funya Rimpa? <laughs> yeah, you mean you, you don't know? Damn. How the hell would I know? How could you not know? Oh, that's whew, that's practically blasphemous. <laughs> oh, oh, say you're sorry. Apologize to the Funya Rimpa. Goodness, you are such a rude woman. So rude. You don't know what the Funya Rimpa? <laughs> Junpei, are you just screwing around? No. <laughs> Forget it. I'm just gonna tell you. This is a dog. See? Like this. Oh, it's a is it a French bulldog? Or a Frenchie? So now we know what it's a picture of, but I, I don't see how that helps us. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify, initially. But once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. These two pictures. The first was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier. Let's just say it was this picture of a dog. So, their experiment. First, they sent the picture to other parts of the world, outside the reach of British airwaves. To Ireland, the US, Africa, Europe, etc. Then, in each country, they gathered a number of test subjects, roughly a thousand people. They were shown the two pictures and asked, what does this picture look like to you? The results weren't really interesting on their own. 9.2% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then, two days later, they aired a new program on their show. During the 30-minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. After the broadcast, it was a safe bet that the number of people who knew the solution to the dog picture was at least that many. Yeah. After another two days passed, they gathered more research subjects from areas outside the reach of British TV and radio. This time, they only found a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them had participated in the first test. True, the odds of that happening were quite slim. They were, however, given the same tests and the same two pictures. The results were startling. 10% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. The previous test sat at a 9.2% success rate. Not much of a change, statistically. The dog picture, however, produced a very different result. The percentage of people able to successfully find the dog... Oh, it was... Six. It went from 3.9% to 6.8%, a very significant increase. Almost double. So do you understand? Do you realize the significance of this experiment? There was no way the second group could have seen the picture. They lived far away from Britain and couldn't have seen it. But even so, it was only the success rate for the dog picture that went up. Why? How did that happen? What does it mean? Oh, wait, does this have something to do with that field or whatever it was that you were talking about earlier? Morphogenetic? A field not visible to the eye. So, if more people know the answer, then that information will pass through the field. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Huh. Hmm. Yes. Kinda. Hmm. Still thinking. Nope. Psych! <laughs> I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. Seriously? Well, I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen. But the results of that experiment really aren't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. In the end, I'm sure they were just in it for the ratings. They are a TV station after all. Right! Oh, man. You sounded nervous. I admit, you had me there for a minute. I uh, really thought you were serious. <laughs> of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. 
She is a scientific woman, I think. Uh, oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough nonsense. We've got the key. Let's get out of here. Word. Word. Now I can see a dog. A field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenetic field. Morphogenetic. Change of genetics? All right, let's go to the hallway. I'll go get June. You guys head to the door. Okay. Roger that. Yes, it unlocked. Good job, Junpei. Good, now we can get going. Come on, what are you guys standing around for? Let's get out of here. Come on, Jumpy, let's go. Alright, let's go. She just said it. We found a way out. I found it. What is it? Woo. Huh, another hallway. Come on, open! It's not going to open because you rattled it, you know. Damn it! Look over here! Elevators. And the buttons. <laughs> of course they don't work. The power must be out here too, just like by the staircase. That leaves this door. Well, looks like we don't have any choice. Yeah. Sure does. Well then, let's open it. All right, here I go. Ooh. Oh, kitchen? So it's a kitchen. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit. I was hoping this would be the way out of here. <laughs> you really think it'd be that easy? Yeah, yeah, I know. Still. If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. Hmm. But don't we need a key for that? <sighs> no good. I guess that wasn't very constructive. Seems like we need a card. Oh, another puzzle. Let's do this. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Hey! What's that? Huh? Oh yeah, uh, I guess I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I found this a little while ago. It's a map of the B-deck. Let me see that. Oh, she's feisty. See? Look. Yes, yes, hold your horses. What did you figure out? This is handy. See? We came in here. Now if we go out there, <clears throat> then we'll be on the other side of the grate. How about that? She's right. We can get out through there. There we go. Here, you can have it back. Thanks. <laughs> I think I had to figure out. There's a card reader on the right side of the door. We need to find a card, that I guess. That means the key card is somewhere in here, right? That seems the most likely. All right, we know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. Okay. Seek a way out. Okay, kitchen area. Okay, let's check the dishes. One, two, three. There's ten dishes. It looks like hats. The middle is super deep for a plate. They're soup plates. They're made that way so that the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. What makes you think a poor college student has the money to do something like that? Oh, I'm in college. I think there's 15. I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the heck can you tell that? It looked just like any other place from the 99 cent store. <laughs> if you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. 
I feel sorry for June. Oh, why June? What? What? Why the heck are you bringing up June? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. You're not terribly subtle. These plates are for serving meat. Ugh, you really are ignorant, are you? Yes, I am. Come on, it's not like I need to know this stuff. Jeez. Nine. Appetizers. Square plates. Well, excuse me, princess. What's this? Voucher. Nine appetizers, ten meat. Soup A, seafood, fish F. It's a number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, F, G. E, F. There's no G. 10, 11. Base 10 equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, B 13, E 14, 15, and 10 is 16. The 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know it sounds strange, but you can think of it as just 6 letters added to the normal number system after 9. So, A, B, C, D, E, F. There's no F. Wait, no, that's six letters. A is 10, 11, 12. Yeah, there's this an F. A, B, C, D, E, F. 10 is 16. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. What would 9 plus F be in base 10? So F would be 15, 16, 20. 24. That's right. Good job. You're a fast learner. Sixteen, seventeen. That would be 17. I think I'll go back to that. There's so much stuff in here. A whole lot of cans. Pantry. Wooden box in the second row, though. A knife. A rusted knife. A rusty knife? I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste, useless, pointless. Oh, um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason, really. I was just thinking about futility. Huh? Why were you thinking about futility? Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. The Titanic? Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? No, I, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time, size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. But this book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. Hmm. But that's not all. 
It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Right, I knew you'd say that. Hmm? But what if Stead had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit and then they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. But Jumpy, you said you believe in curses. Uh-oh, I'm a little... Come on, that's totally different. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him? That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. What are you smoking? Crack. William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Um, well, uh... <laughs> well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But... Come on, let's get back to it. That's an interesting... That's very interesting. Cheese! You're right. Why don't we move some of the cheese? Alright, guys, time to move it. June, I need to look behind you. Oh, there's a bottle of Mountain Dew. Oh, oil. This is Gouda cheese, the most famous Dutch cheese. If you don't cut it open with the casing, it usually won't go bad. So you can store it at room temperature for quite a while. So we can eat this? Most likely. Uh, I'm not hungry. Ow. I guess it's hard to get hungry in a situation like this. Gouda cheese. Here's milk. Milk in an iron barrel. Judging by the rust, it's probably really old. Maybe we shouldn't open it up. I don't think it'd be a pretty sight. Ooh. Cattle. Silver. Spending a day off with you and drinking tea. Could such a day ever happen to me? Jumpy? Oh, nothing. We don't really need hot water, so we should be moving on. Swinging doors. Without this door, you'd need to run all the way around the part. Partition to get to the other side. Well, I guess it's not really important, but still. This table look really old-fashioned. Probably means this is an old boat. Maybe. It's a lot of notes. They got a bunch of stuff written on them, but it doesn't look like a code or anything like that. Oh, wow. Wait. Oh, I'm in a corner. Okay. A pressure cooker. What kind of idiot are you? You're gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so serious? 
There's a code. An iron oven looks pretty heavy duty. It's probably industrial quality. I bet you could cook anything with this. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Oh no, it's locked. Darn, I knew it. It's locked. Condiments. Seasoning. There's the key card. It's a card reader. Since the light's red, I figure it's probably still locked. The key card has got to be around here somewhere. We just got to find it. This is the door we came through. It's not locked so we could go back out, but what's the point, right? Oh, that's out there. It's an iron gate and dead end hallway. Yep. Might as well be locked for all the good going back out there. Do. Sink. A sink. It's all got water in it. It's a cold place there, but I don't think they're gonna help us much. A west stone. Getting shower by the second. Yeah, knife. Oh. Trash. Well, better than full of rotten food. Darn it, nothing in here. Hey Santa, digging through the trash really suits you. What the heck did you say? Listen, lady, I did you a favor. I knew you'd just piss and moan, so I did it for you. Oh my, I don't recall asking you to do anything. Urgh. I ought to throttle you. Excuse me? Does it feel colder in here? Perhaps. A countertop? There's a rolling pin and a colander here. Nothing useful. How about that thing? Ooh, a stove. I wonder what this drawer is. You see the meat grate on top of the grill? They make it like that so that the fat and juices can drip off the meat while it cooks. Nice. <coughs> oh, man. There's an area under the plate opens up. No, you can't. I already checked. It's still shut. I think that's where the coal goes. Alright, it's going. Do you think that was all part of Zero's plan? Probably. Kinda hard to believe there's a chef on board somewhere. Maybe I need meat? No. It won't budge. Of course. Maybe if I put some oil in it. Hey. Just a little bit of oil and voila! Come on, come on, you little locket, you! Whoa! Ha! You did it, Jumpy! You're so smart! That's a freezer. Oh, it's cold in here. What is this place? Are you blind? It's a freezer! Oh, no way! That's way too cold for me. <laughs> I mean, look at your outfit, Lotus. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. Bye. Oh, whoa! It's really cold in here. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Oh. Huh? What? <laughs> no! Why did it suddenly close? Ah! The Cross knob's bite. frozen! But why? It looks like the pipe next to it broke and. Hey! Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side, please! Oh, fine. If you say so, hold on. It's no use. It won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Dang. 
leaving us to freeze. Oh. Uh, God damn it. Anyway, uh, let, let, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're, we're going to be permanent residents. Two heads are better than none. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. There's some frozen meat up there. It looks like pork. Huh? What's this? It looks like a tag or something. What's that tag? Dry eyes. Okay. Dry ice is just frozen <coughs> carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How is that going to help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I am the clean... <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. Yes, queen. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's kind of weird? No. Normal. I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. You want it out of the freezer now? It did seem rather odd. Uh, it is kind of weird. Oh, but it can turn into a liquid. Oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure... It won't turn into a liquid, right? Oh, that's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. Hmm? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Originally, Ice 9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. <sighs> But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. 
So is this thing called Ice Nine, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this Ice Nine are like that? Yep. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it. They did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new, crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. Hello, Eloya. Just doing some chemistry lessons. Don't mind me. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. Yeah, glycerin taking over the world, trying to... Make a statement. <laughs> but once the crystallization had begun, it doesn't stop. It was almost like, how do I put it? It's a my uh, hive mind. It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Yeah. Communicating in some way that we can't sense, and now it's happening everywhere. Was honestly impressed. Was kind of annoyed. I would say I am impressed. Wow. That's, that's pretty interesting. But, uh, what does that have to do with Ice-9? What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice-9. What happened, I mean. A lot like? Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man. It'd be the end of the world. <sighs> at any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. Yes, why are we doing this? All right, guys. I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. Yes, in the freezer too. I mean, I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. Well, apparently we went to a freezer room to find some clues, but then the door got frozen shut, a bursted pipe of water came out, locking us in. And now we're just talking about Ice-9 and glycerin. I don't know why. So seriously? I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. Oh, and also, happy birthday, Eloya. <laughs> and he's a Santa Claus. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Selfish, isn't he? Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. Yes, I just want to get out. See, this is the this is the thing. This bursted pipe, darn you. There's water dripping from this pipe. Hmm, it looks like when the pipe burst, the water hit the doorknob and froze it froze it in place. It's actually, this water actually seems almost warm. Hey Junpei, didn't you find some dry ice earlier? Yeah, there's some warm water coming out from that pipe. Warm water, dry ice? What do you think that will happen if you put this stuff together in a sealed container? Okay. What's down here? It's a sturdy rope. Hello. Saint Antit Philoc, Alistar. How are you? There's so much stuff in here. Why don't we take why don't we take some of it out, Jumpy? Do you know what the first game in the series which game? This one? It should be this one. Nine doors, nine hours, nine something. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, zero escape. This is the first one. The second one is... Uh, Virtue's Last Reward. And the third one is Time Dilemma. This is actually the first game. And it's a pretty long... Like, they explain a lot. So in the beginning, it might kind of drag on, but I don't know. I'm trying to just enjoy it. There are a couple of bottles in here. It's a water bottle. So if I combine this with this one. No. This one? This one? No. Hmm. Frozen chicken. Look at that frozen chicken. I like chicken. Mm. Nope. Nope. Should I put the bottle in? Nope. Meat? Nope. Chicken? Nope. Okay, I need to combine stuff. So can I do that? Nope. Do you have any ideas, everyone? Or there's something here. Can't flip it over. Oh, make it smaller? Do I have to chop it up? How do I make it smaller? Oh, is this it?
Put water into the bottle with dry ice and make sure the lid's closed. Now I just have to put this makeshift bomb on the doorknob. All right, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock? Huh, a small rock. All right, this ought to do the trick. Ah, some dry ice, huh? Not a bad idea. All right, guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? There isn't really anywhere big enough. Yeah, there is. Look, right here. We can hide in there. Come on, get inside, quick. All right, here I go. Three, four, five. You're counting the wrong way. Oh, oops. <laughs> that is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. All right, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes, whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. All right, here I go. Three, two, one. door is it gone yeah it's gone the blast must have shattered it yes all right let's see if it opens hooray we're out move oh god damn it oh, da, 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 da. fuck well you did just grab the grill what did you think would happen hey where's lotus Welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh, yeah? But you didn't. So everything worked out alright, didn't it? What the hell?! <laughs> Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Sure, lady. Oh, don't give me that crap! I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die too. See? <sighs> I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So, all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? Fine. But there's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? Wait, what? You think I closed the door on you? Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. Yeah, I guess so. If she had really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Not an attempted murderer. Well, um, I'm sorry. Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's alright. As long as you understand. Hey, no more screwing around, you two! Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. Oh? How rude! I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah! <laughs> How about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go!
Hello, Mr. Aske. I'll be muted for a while because my family's noisy. Happy holidays to you, Mr. Aske. Whoa! To play through the Dongarampa, we started the Zero Escape. Oh, nice. I just started the first one. I found it. I think we've been here before. Yes, sir. The elevators are over there, so that means... We went into the kitchen through that door and came out on this side. That means the map was right. Looks like. Then let's use it to plan our next move. Next move? Yeah, we need to decide where to go from here, don't we? He's right. Let's get started. From the looks of it, there are four possible routes. Let's just keep it simple and call them A, B, C, and D. First, A and B. They both seem to connect to a room that looks L-shaped. Yeah, there were two doors. But they were both locked. We couldn't open them. Now, Route C. This goes all the way to the main staircase. That means it's door five, one of the numbered doors. And do you think we would meet up with the other four after this hallway? No, I don't think we will. Why not? Look, there by the stairs. See how the gate is opened? When we went into the kitchen, it was closed. But it's open now. What do you think that means? They opened it. Most likely. And if we take Route C, we're going backwards. That would be pointless. Then that means... Route D, then. D it is. Yep, Route D. If they keep repeating D a lot, <laughs> oh no. Then we're set. And everything looks okay here. Let's check the next deck just to be sure. Yeah, just like I thought, D deck is totally underwater. <laughs> Just like the bottom of the central staircase. At least the water level hasn't really changed. Small comfort. May as well head back to C deck. Hmm, what else is here? There are two elevators over there at the top of the stairs, just like the floor above. Hold on, these are kind of different. See? There's a card reader on the side. Another That's strange Mercury. Mark. Hey, look, it's Lotus's symbol. Huh? See, it's the woman symbol with horns on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that seems like. Yeah, knock him out. Oh, ouch, 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 ouch. What was that about the mark again? Uh, uh nothing. 
I like Lotus. Just saying. This is a Mercury symbol. It is Mercury. The horns symbolize the wings on Hermes' staff. Hermes herpes, whatever. Herpes? Dang. If we can't get this thing to work, these elevators aren't going anywhere. In other words, we need a key card with the Mercury symbol on it. Probably. I guess we can't get on then. Let's just disregard the elevators for now. How about this hallway on the left? On the left? Oh, that's a long hallway. Whoa, there's so many doors. Damn it. If we try and search all these, the sun's gonna go down before we've done half of them. I think the sun already set. I have a feeling this ship is the only thing that's going to be going down anytime soon. That's even worse. Well, we can come back to this hallway later. Let's check the hallway on the other side, shall we? <sighs> Time to head back to the stairs. And now the right hallway. Uh, there are doors here too. Uh, well, I guess it's just four this time. Let's open them. All right. Let's start with this one. Huh? It isn't locked. I'm going to open it. Wow. First time a door isn't locked. What? What? Oh, a bed. Beds, not a bed, beds. A three, a seven, and an eight. What, what the hell is this? This place is huge. I think, I think I'm gonna end it there for now. Let's do it with number three. Sea deck, large hospital room. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to do a mini raid. That's an advert for a Subway burger. I mean, sorry, yeah, a Subway sandwich. Yeah, I started there. I'm just splitting the plug. 